Okay, I want to review using branch diagrams to calculate genotypic and phenotypic ratios. I'm going to posit a trihybrid cross, so I'm dealing with three genes independently assorting, so the inheritance of one has no effect on the other. And one organism is going to be heterozygous, big A, little a. It's going to be homozygous for B, big B, big B, and heterozygous for C, big C, little c. I cross that to a second organism that is also heterozygous for A, big A, little a. It's homozygous for B, little b, little b, and heterozygous for C, big C, little c. What happens when I cross these? Let's think about the genotypic ratio first. So genotypically speaking, let's start with A. It doesn't matter. They're independent. I can pick anyone to start with. Let's just start with A. Big A, little a cross to big A, little a. So this is a heterozygous cross. I'm crossing a heterozygote to another heterozygote. Review basic Mendelian monohybrid crosses, and you'll remember that that's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio among the progeny. So among the progeny, I've got a three-way split here. I've got big A, big A. I've got big A, little a. And I'm going to have some little a, little a's as well. And in fact, I'm going to have one of these, two of these, and one of these. Oops, that's not a very good one. Let's try that again. One. There we are. Okay. So now, as far as B is concerned, one parent gives us a big B allele, the other parent gives us a little b allele, no matter what. So every single progeny organism out of this cross is going to be big B, little b. They'll be heterozygous for B. So there's no branching. They're all the same. So we can just draw those. You know, don't branch them. You could, not even, you could even not write them, but to be complete, let's do that. So big B, little b. And now for C, that again is a heterozygote cross to a heterozygote as far as C is concerned, so that, like A, is a three-way split for all three of these. And so I'm going to get, once again, large, 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 little, little, little. In this case, it's C. So big C, big C, big C, little C, little C, little C, big C, big C, big C, little C, little C, little C. And the numbers, once again, are 1 to 2 to 1, to 1 to 2 to 1, to 1 to 2 to 1. So now what's the actual ratio? To calculate the ratio, I've got a total here of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different genotypes. Each of these branches is going to be a different genotype if you write them out, which ultimately you need to do. But So big A, big A, big B, little b, big C, big C. How many of those do I have? 1 times 1 is 1. How about big A, big A, big B, little b, and the heterozygote big C, little c? Again, 1 times 2 gives us 2. So you just multiply the numbers across, 1 to 2 to 1. Now here, I've got 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then 2 and 1 and 2 and 1. So I have a total of 9 different genotypes, and the ratio would be 1 to 2 to 1 to 2 to 4 to 2 to 1 to 2 to 1. Of, and then you, you need to write it out, big A, big A, big B, little b, big C, big C. I've got big A, big A big B, little b, big C, little c, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that's how you calculate the genotypic ratio. I could simply, from this, now go in and say, okay, well, let's see, I've got, if I'm looking for the dominant for all three, dominant for A, dominant for B, dominant for C, I've got that's, that is one, that's one, and so I could add those up and eventually get to the, to that result. But there, it's, and that, that works, that's perfectly valid. Uh, I'm going to instead actually just recalculate this just using phenotypes. So, starting again. Again, my genotypes were big A, little a, big B, big B, and heterozygous big C, little c, crossed to heterozygous for A, homozygous for recessive for B, and big C, little c. So that's my cross. Now, if I'm looking only at the phenotype, and again, let's start with A. Uh, the phenotype is a 3 to 1 ratio. I'm going to get a split for A, and I'm going to get big A something and little a, little a. And again, for the something here, I don't care what that is. I don't care if it's a big A or a little a. They're going to look the same. The phenotype is going to be the same. So in this case, I have a 3 to 1 ratio. I've got three a, big A somethings to one little a, little a. Once again, the Bs don't change anything. Big B, little b b, little b, that's going to look the same. And phenotypically, I'm going to have another uh, branch point with c something, big c something, and little c, little c, 
big C something, little c, little c. And again, the numbers there are 3, 1, and 3, mm, and 1. How many do I have? What's my actual ratio? 3 times 3 gives me 9. 3 times 1 gives me 3. 1 times 3 gives me 3. And 1 times 1 gives me 1. And so 9 of these are going to be big A something, big B little b, big C something. Three of them are going to be big A something, big B little b, little c, little c. Three are going to be little a, little a, big B little b, big C something. And finally, little a, little a, big B, little b. Oops, That's, that should be... little c, little c, little c. There we are. Okay, so in this case, uh, it happens to work out to be a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio phenotypically. And again, if you, uh, if you combine uh, the different genotypes which give rise to the same phenotype, because again here, big A something, that could be big A big A, could be big A little a. That will give us the same phenotype, the same thing with the C's. So if you go back to the genotypic tree that we just did and combine and pool the, the various genotypes to the same phenotype, you'll get the same 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So that's how you calculate uh, the genotypic and phenotypic ratios using the branch diagram. You'll get exactly the same results if you do the, the Punnett square, but depending on the number of uh, genes you're looking at at the time, this may be a simpler method to use.